Big shout out to Orlando. Y'all came out this week and supported me. I appreciate that. Oh, that's good. Orlando Improv, they be having to cancel a lot of shows at these comedy clubs, man. Really? Because they can't afford to have the staff come there and they only sold 10, 15 tickets. Ooh, well, I'll tell you right now, me and Erica went to go see Ralph, right? At Barbosa, Ralph? Ralph Barbosa, the little young kid at the comedy store. Oh, he how was that? Sold, I was, he was great, but that, I hadn't been to the comedy store in ages. And let me just tell you, out of everything, like the food and stuff, I was like, oh, this is terrible. Huh? Food? Eh, horrible. They only have like... They're the worst, the comments are. Sorry, uh, they need to pick it up because I'm telling you right now that that was the only drawback was that we were like, what? And it we were we were we were not happy about that. It was terrible the service. They only had like in that whole huge the big room, only had like two people, and everybody was going, what? In the, yeah. Well, that's what I. That, that's what I want to talk about. Do you know how hard it is to get staff at these clubs? Because like sometimes they have to cancel shows because. They like, we can't afford to pay you because nobody's in here. Like, when I was at the Orlando Improv, I was talking to one of the guys who uh, always show me love on the staff. Mm -hmm. And he was just telling me, like, some of the shows have to get canceled because there's no tickets being sold. Mm. You know what I'm saying? For some acts. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I hope this comedy club business don't falter. Hey, can I ask you one other thing? It's just going to make you richer, though. Well, maybe. I mean, I'm saying, uh, but what you want to ask me? No, I, said I think some girls getting there. I don't know. I can't tell. Uh -oh. No, they just talking. That ain't Ooh. sound. Just raise the price. <laughs> uh, no, what I was going to ask you was, um, I, and I would do it if I if I felt like it was necessary, but I've seen, and at that night there was a big bowl there, whatever, of for tipping. So the guy that was like, okay, come on in, the line, whatever. So you've got the guy that, that at the front door. you got the two, like two security guys. Another guy that's kind of like brings you in. He Tipping talks where? Him. It's got a big old jar that says, you know. And then he even said, um, before you go inside, everybody, if you'd like it, if you could please tip, uh, tip us. Uh, Wait, what? Like hey, They do that at takeout restaurants now. This is what I'm yeah, saying. So what, what, what is going on? Nigga? Like, I don't understand. Like, what did you do? I, I, you yeah. got... I'm what? saying like the world, this is what happens what? when you have a world where everything goes unchecked. He this goes back server. to what we were talking about at the beginning of the show. He wasn't the server. So was, mm. People, if it goes unchecked, it only gets worse. They feel like they deserve a tip and they're working security. No, this guy was not even a security. He was just like, how you say, uh... A random, a like, sitting you down? well, no, not even the host. He was like, come on in. So you pass by the security guy. You pass by another guy at the door that checks your per. Then he's just like, come on in. And he's breaking down, like, the, the rules, you know, no yeah. phones. Although they were more lenient than the um, Laugh Factory because you could take your phone in there. They just said you could even take a picture with the comedian if the comedian happens to be out, like, near the stage of the audience. But put it away once the show starts. If right. we see it, then we're going to take it. But they were more lenient about allowing phones. But he was just telling you the so-called rules and the, you know, whatever, the ordering time, blah, blah, blah. And that's it. Like, come this way. And that's it. And he would have the guy, the, 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 the person who would come and sit you down, then come. So he was just some rant, the guy that just worked at the front, not even the cash. Begging manager. for tips. And, and, and he said, it's like a big thing decorated. And he was like, and if you guys can, if everybody can please tip before you go. Wait, what? Customer service is not even <laughs> well, Eric, something Eric that's like, enforced like, no. by people. They're just so Desperate to get people to work, D. And it's crazy because you think you pay the money because that was what a hundred dollars, fifty dollars a yeah. piece. This the comedy film? business, yeah. You know, I've been hanging out in the comedy business for a while, and I'm watching the comedy business suffer from what has happened, in my opinion, post COVID. Mm, true. Yeah. They are selling these clubs now. Heck yeah. mm. You can hear what I'm saying here? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's scary, dude. Has it, listen, I would be mad if I went to a comedy club, paid for parking, because that's the first thing you do. Oh. As soon as you get there, you got to so pay for parking somewhere. Okay. When you walk in the door, the host want a tip. Right. <laughs> what if the comic ain't shit? Yep. Good point. Well, and you done paid for the food. You have what to. if the comic ain't shit? It's a minimum. That's Let's what they Larry. Have. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> they 
they be bragging on how they getting over. <clears throat> who would, who, well, I ain't gonna even do that. Man, I hate this business has become to the point where the clubs try to book popular people instead of talented people. That's a really good point. And I'm sure there are some who are good, but I was always of the opinion that a lot of the internet comedians and the people who make funny skits online, that doesn't necessarily translate to being a good stand-up comedian where you, where you can go on stage for 15, 30, an hour and just do your thing. So I've always been leery of all quote-unquote internet comedians, but that's just me. At one time, the club used to book talented people, but now the internet has taken over. So talented people are not as important as popular people. But the popular people don't even have an act because they're not seasoned comedians. That's Those right. are the people that make people feel good about going to see them, even though they don't have a name. But now, the way the world and climate has changed, popular people are booked. Popular people. Because the internet is funny than a mother. <laughs> you got mother. They do one nighters at these clubs. What's that have a name? Um, uh, Tasha K. We was at war with. I was at war with. This bitch does one nighters at the clubs. What is she? <laughs> what is she gonna say? Let's call Corey, baby mama, while I'm up here. What the. F is she gonna do? She ain't got no jokes. And I remember seeing clips of Tasha K because I think it was for a video I did of Corey and Tasha K when they get into it. I remember seeing those clips of her doing stand up. No nope. access denied. No, no thank you. But they had comedy clubs, and this is what's so the public doesn't take responsibility. That's what we was talking about earlier. Yeah. You went to see her. And don't be mad at the club because she didn't have no jokes. She went up there to bullshit you and try to last 45 minutes before they start booing. I'm just saying. I ain't talking about only Tasha K or Less Hilarious. It's a lot of male comics that flat out are not ready to be presented to you in a way where you're paying 20 plus dollars for a ticket. The game has suffered from not being regulated like it used to. It's never regulated. been regulated fair, though. I want to say that. I was regulated back in the day. It was regulated back in the day. A lot of the comics that were booked as headliners were able to headline the club. Yeah. And you had to make your rounds, right? Like you're putting your, your dues, like making your rounds, performing at all these clubs for a certain amount of time before people kept In 2010 accepting. at a comedy club, you can just go to a comedy club and not know the act. The comedy club is going to be responsible enough to book an act that That's can true. be funny. Even if you, he wasn't, or he shut, or she wasn't your cup of tea, you would be like, it was funny, but it wasn't really my shit. Now, mm. sometimes you go in there and you like, what the f just happened to me? But honestly, <laughs> oh, go ahead, what happened, Phil? Phil ah. just said the clubs used to promote the clubs. Let me tell you something, man. Some of these clubs also have a, 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 a location where it is a middle class. See, when you go through Texas, Texas has a middle class, homie. Texas ain't just broke rich. Texas has some people with jobs where they do all right. They can afford a ticket. That's why, though, in my, this is my opinion. A lot of those places do well. But, like, when you go to some cities, it ain't nothing but people who got it and people who don't. <laughs> and the people who don't, when they find a ways to spend their dollar, they're really hurt. If you have somebody representing the comedy club who doesn't have any talent, but that person might be a person with a lot of followers on the internet. So that's what you got to look out for. I'm talking to the consumers, the ones that aren't funny, you'll find out they're not funny if you do a little research. <laughs> and some, I, the unfunny one's gonna be mad at me, but I don't care. But some of them, you don't even need to do research. You see one, two things uh, on them or like about what, them. You? Like that one, guy what's his name i think people what's i don't want to say his whole name because i don't want to give him any any more exposure but he's the one who talks crazy about people he's always dissing he's getting in fights with everything who i don't want to give him attention more attention okay I okay but it. you know what i'm talking about like people like that i think people will pay regardless just to go see the train wreck just to go see the mess like oh, but there's some people who don't want to pay to see the train wreck right but at least but one thing know. you can definitely 
if somebody always got an excuse about what happened, <laughs> oh man, they ran out of Doritos. Man. Oh yeah, they been, yeah. <laughs> what happened was be that motherfucker <laughs> ain't shit. <laughs> the weather was bad. That's yeah. throughout life, though. If somebody always got a reason that wasn't them, that motherfucker ain't shit. I'm telling you that. I'm not talking about me, one yeah. person. I'm talking about life. If a motherfucker always got an excuse about what something happened to them, you be like, oh motherfucker, you ain't shit. Because, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What the f*** you do? And that's a fact. I don't really have much to say as far as the comedy game, you know, besides what I already stated. I've always been in the mindset of not paying for something that an internet comedian is going to host in or participate in. Not saying that there aren't some good ones. It's just that, nah, I just, I've always had that thought that most of that internet comedy stuff doesn't translate to real life being on the stage. That being said, I think Corey made an excellent point at the end. It has nothing to do with comedy. To me, that's just kind of a, a rule I have on life. One thing I hate is talking to a growing ass man and hearing nothing but excuses a b c d why you didn't do the things that you were supposed to do or were or why you aren't at where you would like to be in life if you're constantly pointing the other finger at people that's just like a pet peeve of mine that grinds my gears i hate people that make excuses but you guys let me know what you think do better squad fall off